Uh, well, hello, my name is Nicholas Bell, and it is my pleasure to speak with director Tinitin Kadrishvili and producer Lasha Kalvashi for their new film, Citizen Saint, uh, which premiered at the Karlavi Vary Film Festival earlier this year. And notably, it is Georgia's official submission in the category of Best International Feature Film uh, at the 96th Academy Awards. So congratulations on all Thank those Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, so you two have worked together on all three of Tinitin's films. Uh, and it's my understanding that Citizen Saint, you were getting financing for this before uh, her last film, Horizon. So let's walk through the origins of this uh, and, and your uh, screenwriter, who's a very notable author himself, uh, and, and where the idea for this film came about. Um, so it was before pandemic <laughs> and, um, yeah, it, it's inspired by the short story, uh, named by, uh, named by Amigo. And then it took me long to make it to translate it to the screen because novel itself, uh, the short story started, sounded very interesting, but for filming, it was very risky to find the way how the statue would come to life and walk among the citizens. Uh, but as soon as I uh, came to the mind to shoot all, all the film in the mining town, then immediately I understood that I, 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 I could manage. And uh, yeah, for a while I was taking time, pausing this uh, writing process, and that's why I shot Horizon and then uh, jumped back and continued uh, working on Citizen Saint. Um, it strikes me as a film that had this tried to be made by someone decades prior, it would have been banned or suppressed. Uh, it's very daring uh, with its subject matter. Uh, and I'm wondering, you have a lot of biblical and mythological themes blended in there. Uh, and I'm wondering who other literary references or film references might be, because it made me think of all kinds of master auteurs. Yeah, as, as it's uh, very common when we touch these kind of themes to have some hints from different and to have some perspectives or going back in the past uh, same kind of uh, themes um, I, I can't say that I, uh, I I was very much inspired with this biblical and all, all this uh, mythological um, uh, archetypes or something linked to Georgia for example I have Medea uh, dog's name, and uh, we consider that he's the call the ancestor of Georgians. This woman, so I combined all this. And, well, like Tarkovsky came to mind a lot, uh, as did Belatar, uh, maybe even Diary of a Country Priest by Bresson, but uh, it, and also something like The Wicker Man. Even this this idea of somebody has to be assigned uh, as a sacrifice for. The system of faith to work, which I, I really liked. Uh, Medea, it, so that I thought <laughs> he is a, a funny little character. Uh, and I assume that she's supposed to be obviously aligned with uh, the father who's mourning his son, who's also, you know, responsible for the death of a child he couldn't care for. I thought that all wor works really well. Uh, but was Medea always part of the script? Um. I, I don't, I, the, the dog was, and mm. then we wanted uh, her to be um, uh, Medea. Yeah, I, it came immediately. And we wanted also her to be accused in something. So it was, um, yeah. And once yeah. that, it's hard not to see her, the dog looks guilty. She looks like she guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, same, same like the saint. He's most innocent person among others, but he's finally kind of either accused or um, uh, yeah. speaking of your saint uh, George Babluani who's yes. uh, is his brother is a notable Georgian filmmaker yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bella Babluani and uh, George Babluani. Uh, audience uh, remembers him from uh, film uh, 13 or Tsameti, uh, which was at Sundance, Venice Film Festival. Uh, so I love uh, Georgi since then, and um, I, I, I use this opportunity to have him in my film. Uh, he he spent part of his life in France, and for uh, for the Georgian uh, or the, for the Georgian characters, he looks foreigner and a, a native at the same time. So his uh, visual and his innocent look really um, helped me to create this character of this. Yeah, character. he he's looked the same for a while because I remember seeing him in uh, Christophe Honore's Metamorphosis uh, about a decade ago as well. Uh, let, let's talk about your other cast members. Um, Georgi, I'm going to, his last name, Bokorishvili? As, Bokorishvili. Bokorishvili. Who I think a lot of people might know from What Do We See When We Look at the Sky recently, who I, I thought was really good in that. I think he's uh, really great. And uh, also Mari Kitia, who was the lead in Brides. Yes. Uh, the... Georgi, Georgi was lead in my second film, Horizon, mm -hmm. Yeah, which I shot and premiered in 2018. So these two people are the ones who I trust the most. And uh, after uh, working with them, for so long and uh, having this experience, uh, they were the first ones we, which I picked for this film. Uh, and also the old couple uh, who bring the ship, they are from my bride and from Horizon and I, I shoot them in all my films. Um, yeah, and other others, uh, uh, there, there are some others also which I, worked in my previous films because Citizen Saint was very complicated. Uh, we were shooting it during the lockdown, uh, during the restrictions, and I really needed people uh, who I trust and they trust me and uh, oh, and it would be another level for all of us um, uh, going through this journey of the surrealistic or uh, difficult story. So yeah, cast was very important for me. Well, you can't see any of that difficulty on screen uh, at all. Um, <laughs> I, I was curious because uh, I learned the mine that you shot at is operational. Uh, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm mostly curious, did the locals uh, have any feelings about the filming or the subject matter even while you were shooting? Uh, film, uh, the, these uh, mi miners working there are, um, you can't astonish them with any filming or um, yeah, they were aware of the subject, but not as deeply. Uh, uh, so and most of the crew is also among the actors, among the miners. Uh, we, we were not, we, it was a small crew, but we all were uh, equipped and wearing the same uniform as the miners with helmets and lamps. And so um, uh, the production designer's crew mainly is involved in all uh, these difficult mise-en-scenes of um, taking the cross down or um, other, other uh, long shots, which was very difficult for the uh, actors to follow because of these huge uh, tracks uh, acting there and so on. Yeah. But um, let, let me jump in that uh, talking about the miners. So we were uh, working uh, together. So on the one part of the mine, uh, they were doing their job and another one we were doing. But on the lines time, we were sitting together and sharing our food. And so it was like very surreal in one one, one hand and very touchy because uh, all of us were doing job and these people are- They were helping to... a lot. Yeah, they, they were, were helping a lot. Some of them, like so part of them, uh, real miners are an extras. So they were enjoying our company and they are shooting film as well. 
Um, in, in several ways, it's kind of a departure from your previous two films, both in the look and perhaps the subject matter, but thematically, especially maybe with Brides, and I don't know if it was because of the casting of Mari, but I felt very similar towards my empathy for these people that are kind of married to something that's that's keeping them stuck somewhere. Um, I, I'm wondering if that obviously is probably something you're very much attracted to uh, in storytelling is people that for a choice they almost can't help are letting themselves wallow somewhere. Uh, just uh, maybe I love to create this uh, microcosmos and I want to have the boundaries or I'll say to create the small uh, um, atmosphere where they are stuck even on, in, on horizon they all are or they all live on an island on a, in a swamp uh, in bright it's his prison and here I wanted to uh, the factory and industrial place where we don't see any nature, we just hear the sea or imaginary sea. And um, I don't want it to see any inhabited areas. Uh, uh, so we, we really tried hard uh, not to have even a proper roads there. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I wanted everything to be reconstructed the way we wished. Mm. Um, yeah, and I wanted them to be stuck, but at the same same time, they 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 all can live. Uh, we have the scene when uh, um, Mari and Saint are kind of they can live, they can escape the place, but they come back and yeah. It's they look as if they're living it, the the final shot of uh, Pasolini's theorem. It's like they're living in that space is <laughs> this wasteland, um, and it and it's it's a dark film, but it's also slightly comedic in a way. There's and from the beginning, from the beginning, it was black comedy, but slowly somehow <laughs> <laughs> I ended up with a bit of dramatic elements in it and. Yeah, it's it's very bittersweet, but I, but I really am drawn to that. I like that quite a bit. Um, so your the the limitations of faith is kind of the major theme to me of this, and I don't know if you want to speak to some of the greater themes that you're getting at in Citizen Saint, or if, in relation to. Any modern um, political metaphors or anything? Um, I just uh, I I wanted somehow. Uh, I, that's why I have so uh, a lot of main characters because I don't want it to have the one line. Uh, because we all have our choices, we have our thoughts, and um, th that's why I, all of my characters carry a different uh, um, perspective to their life and their um, choices. Uh, they are all in crisis, and I, I push them to the edge where they have to decide where, where is the uh, where are the boundaries of death, uh, life. Uh, where is the belief, uh, religion? So, uh, where is uh, where is the hope? Do we need to look up and wait for some miracles? Miracles, or are we are the ones who have to see each other and find love between us, and not wait for some uh, saints to come and rescue us? Or well, I think I think one of the most kind of powerful moments is when you have the city officials saying, because we don't know if the saint will speak now that he's kind of uh, yeah. in, in person, but what will work better for us is... is... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all about our choices, you know, which, which path we choose uh, to find the reason of our life and uh, reason of hope, the reason of hope. Um. You know, it's a it's a very beautiful looking film. Despite the darkness of everything, it's a beautifully shot film. Uh, Crum Rodriguez is your cinematographer. Uh, can you talk about working with him? And I've seen some of his previous work, in a, especially in a film called Godless by Relitza Petrova, which won, I think, Locarno 
several years ago. And this looks drastically different from that. But uh, talk about approaching it with uh, the monochrome visuals. Uh, uh, just I, I knew that he was great DP. Uh, but uh, great professionals are very hard to work with. And I knew that uh, I had very diffic difficult um, environment, location set, and I was a bit afraid because we didn't know each other before. And I was really astonished that I found this person most calm. Uh, we, we even did, needed to talk too much. We, we just went through all the script, all the settings, and uh, he was my eyes and my hands. So I, it was a great match. And uh, if not him, I, I don't know uh, what, what, what film I would end up. And I'm really happy that whatever, I, uh, whatever idea will come in my mind, uh, he's the one who can just visualize that. So yeah. he great person, great professional, and really I'm tru truly, us. truly happy to have him for this film. Yeah, it's it I mean, if you just see snippets or um stills of it, you'd think that you were looking at uh this classic art house film. I mean, it, it's it's just a beautiful palette. It's extraordinary. Um and th this is a question I think. I'd love to hear answers from both of you, but it, I think like in the past decade, Georgian cinema has really uh, made an international impact. Uh, whereas in the nineties or before you'd have one or two well-known auteurs, but uh, even over the past five years, it just seems like there's a proliferation of Georgian cinema. And I'm curious to know if that's because both of you see or have forged more easier opportunities in in Georgia. Um, it is hard to say. Uh, let let me start first as a producer <laughs> uh, that uh, it's easier opportunities. No, it's not so. Um, uh, it's it's a small uh, production capacity country, so we have smaller budgets. Really, really for foreign partners, it's even less than the micro budgets. But um, there are a lot of uh, filmmakers who are in love in their prof profession. It really helps. Uh, uh, please understand me right, because everyone needs to be paid. But people doing their job uh, with uh, less fees, if the budget is not not uh, available there, to uh, have been involved in good filmmaking, good cinema. Uh, and another thing is the tradition. Uh, uh, we had the gap after the collapse of Soviet Union, but during the Soviet Union, most of Georgian filmmakers were known to the world as Russian filmmakers. Soviet so, filmmakers. Yeah, Russians or Soviets. So there was no difference between yeah. us. And uh, so this tradition keeps um, evolving, or I would say. And um, yeah, and the people are very much dedicated to their job. We make very few films. There is a huge competition, a lot of projects because yeah, very we have very talented young uh, generation, and uh, out of uh, fifty projects, only two uh, get real uh, realized, and uh, it's a, a huge demand. When when whoever gets this financing, you understand that. Uh, you have to prove you have to do the best and all you have to choose the best crew. And so maybe that's the reason uh, that we have few films, but most of them end up at A-class film festivals. Uh, they really represent the best parts of our culture, identity. And we, we try to uh, somehow have this tradition, which we had before, um, and maybe it's influenced by the Soviet Union, that we had our own uh, way of storytelling, this parable kind of storytelling because of the censorship, which we had to um, hide to hide, hide. Uh, the truth. And we, we found this very, very nice ways somehow to avoid the censorship and at the same time uh, speak up. So speak out. So maybe these are the ways of uh, ingredients. Ingredients and yeah. yeah, the films you mentioned, they they all have this fairy tale kind of parable kind of 
Um, yeah. Yeah, having to read between the lines uh, and kind of see the devastation going on underneath. Um, but yeah, and what you both said that that makes a lot of sense. But but you know, both of your names I've seen quite a bit. Uh, and Lasha, I, you produced Scary Mother. I think that was also Georgia's Oscar submission that year, and I think several others. So there, it's you know, from somebody over here in the states, it's like it seems like there's a lot of visibility. But I guess that makes sense with who gets the financing. Um, which brings me uh, to to close, since you guys have worked uh, three times before, and I know you're always looking forward, do you have anything else that's kind of in the works? Yeah, we have several projects <laughs> <laughs> in mind. It took me quite long uh, to make uh, Citizen Saint. Uh, so projects are... Uh, so, so I have several at this moment, but um, now we are focused on uh, Citizen Saint to have its uh, life, and um, yeah, other projects will follow very very soon. Yeah, I truly believe Tina is uh, one of the most talented directors uh, in Georgia. Let's say at least, uh, and uh, I really believe uh, she she can uh, make interesting cinema. And we will be following our cooperation uh, in filmmaking as much as, as, as it takes. Well, I, yeah, I mean, you've been working on this film. You were gathering financing as probably, what, 2016, 2017? So it's yeah. been a long, long time. time. Yeah. Well, a long, long pass. Uh, the project itself was quite successful, very successful, I would say, because when we were pitching it, we've been selected on... Uh, La Fabrique and Cannes Film Festival, we won like big industrial, industry platform awards and, and so on and so forth. So it was quite known. Uh, and the moment we decided to start production, uh, the COVID madness started. So we had to postpone it years and another year and another. So we three times postponed the film production, even starting uh, pre-production, some building and decorations and then stopping afterwards. And still, yet we have to shoot during the lockdown. So it, it, it was like quite complicated and film production was done not in the city, uh, capital city, but we were traveling on uh, three different uh, regional cities, which was also complicated during the lockdown, but uh, happily for us. Uh, Saint protected us. <laughs> Saint protected us. <laughs> yes, he did. And, and the thing was that the, the crew became because we were living like separately, like, like in lockdown rules. So we, we've been one group, not communicated for, with anyone outside of the group. So it uh, creates this kind of family atmosphere in the group, film uh, crew, that when we finish the filming, nobody wants to leave. Which is <laughs> quite strange because usually everyone runs home. And it was like, they were like really, really uh, became close friends. And uh, that's what make even in the harsh conditions because it was really hard working as a mine, as a mud, the waterfalls, it's darkness, it's danger. But uh, it was still easy and enjoyable because everyone was like like a big family. That's that's sweet. Uh, but I, I, again, like you can't see any of that on screen. You the final product is an excellent, beautiful film. I mean. Thank you. So, uh, but so it, and truly one of those films, I think if you're somebody that goes to film festivals, this is exactly the kind of feeling you're looking for when you see something to experience it, um, especially on the big screen. I mean, it, it is a, a sight to behold. But um, so thank you very much for your time today. And, uh, you know, uh, best wishes going forward and good luck. Uh, and all the madness to come in the next several weeks for both of you. But um, I'm very much looking forward to uh, what you come up with next as well. Thank you very much, Nicholas.